Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. Today is a big day, Narrative 3.0 has officially been released and there are a buttload of changes to go over, so let's jump straight in. The first is the whole node system has got a complete overwork on the UI. You can now see it's a lot more smooth or a lot more modern. It completely changes how you can see each node and that includes the quest nodes as well. It now shows the conditions and the events under it with the text so you can nicely categorize it and see what there is. So at the top where you have the name, you have a little drop down and you can pick which speaker is saying it and which speaker they are saying it to. And it will change where the cameras go and where the rotations happen. Works absolutely fantastically for multi NPC dialogue. IDs now have a new generation style. So before it would just take the name of the file and then add the word dialogue node and then the speaker and then a random ID. Now every time you generate a new dialogue it will recreate the ID based on the text. So as you can see my speaker is Velia and I have typed testing this node and it has shown the ID of testing this node and this will continuously update to correspond to the, a better ID. Dialogue nodes can now be added into a compact node so if you add a new node and you want to use it for routing only you can come in and take the compact view just to make it a bit more nicer. One big new thing with this new version of narrative is each node can now have blueprint code directly added to it rather than adding an event or checking every time all you have to do is come into the node you want and then double click it it will bring you into a brand new event graph where you can add code that runs specifically when that node is hit you have a started variable so you can just choose whether you run it at the start or the end it will run at both and then you have the node that has been called this works for all nodes including quest nodes so if you've got some code you just want to run on a quest node such as a cutscene you can double click into it and run it and the activated is the same as the started speaking of custom events events now have a brand new option where you can specifically choose where it's going to run it now defaults to start but you can also select end and both both will run as soon as the node begins talking and when it ends and this is the exact same for quest nodes as soon as the quest branch is prepared to be hit it will run and then as soon as it's finished it will end one new thing you have in the class default is the free movement tick box. If you want dialogue where you can still walk around without a problem, you can tick the free movement and it won't lock you in. On the player dialogue, you have some new specific options. Auto select if you ever want dialogue to play as the player. If you want the player to say something, but you didn't want the user to have to select it. In the previous version, you had to add the player as a speaker and use that. In the new version, you can simply add a player option and tick auto select and it won't render to the UI. It will just select it automatically as if the user has clicked it. You now have an alternative lines option on your player options as well as your standard options so they can randomize between what they say when you select an option. Now jumping over to the quests, this is where Narrative 3's biggest changes are. The task system has been completely redone and it's a lot more flexible than it was ever before. Before you would create a custom task and then you would assign a blueprint of some kind in order to complete that task. These have been merged now so you have the brand new Narrative task where it acts like a blueprint where you can come in and you can overwrite different options of it such as the begin task and then in here you can check for if they've gone to the right location if they've arrived at a destination if they've killed an npc and all you do once you've finished is you call add progress where you can pass in an integer in order to say how many times you've completed the task. So all you do to complete the quest now is by calling add progress from within the task itself. You can also now pass a quantity to it. So if you pick up five apples, you don't have to call complete narrative task five times. You just pass it five in. Big change. You can also do negative numbers. So if you have a quest where they must carry five items to a destination, but they drop one before you had to restart the quest. Now you don't need to. You just pass minus one to the add progress and narrative will update and remove one of the increments. Other functions you can override is the description and the note description. If you want to change how narrative renders it in the quest graph and the tick task which is basically a replacement for the event tick if you need to use it. And on the flip side, you also have the old style of tasks still available, but they have been renamed to data tasks. Data tasks are more useful for arbitrary things you don't want a task for, such as if the player presses jump or how many times they paused the game or how many times they died, you can use a narrative data task to log this data. Just as before, they have a brand new UI interface which shows it all off very nicely. And for any where you've 
double clicked on it has this nice little lightning bolt at the top which tells you that's the node you've double clicked on with an event another very nice feature that will be quite nice is by default narrative now has a go to location node built in where you can add your goal location your tolerance and some other details required for it really nicely you can of course overwrite this or make your own if you want to do it collider based instead of event tick based so the new interface for the tasks you will see under tasks you still have your old arguments so you can easily replace them this will eventually be phased out in a in a few updates so it's not there anymore but you can see once you've added your tasks instead of clicking single or multiple anymore it's outright been replaced with just an array and you can see all the fields that are specifically required to your task here so in my case go to location and then you have your default task variables such as your quantity and override for the description whether it's optional or not hidden and how often the interval for the tick is another new feature is the persistent tasks have been removed and replaced with an any state branch where it should give you some more flexibility to do quest wide failures and successions and other stuff like that all narrative related things now have brand new icons so you can see the old style quest blueprints the new data tasks and the new tasks the events now have a light bulb dialogue has a speech bubble and conditions have a question mark there is also better linux android and mac support backwards compatibility you now have access to all of the narrative features inside of the right click menu so you can access everything you need without having to go and manually go and create the blueprint class so you can get your new data task your dialogue condition event quest and, and your new task blueprints you can still of course go and override anything you need backwards compatibility is there in a sense it will take some reconfiguring to make it work in my own experience any dialogue you have that was created in the previous version of narrative you will just need to open and just hit compile that is all you need to do if you don't it will act like your dialogue is just not playing at all all you have to do is click compile and it should resolve any issues there quests unfortunately are a bit broken backwards compatibility wise but this is where you can just come in find the previous argument and replace it it will take a little bit but if you've made all your quests generic it should come together really quickly thanks for watching ladies and gentlemen if you've spotted anything new i've missed in this tutorial please let me know below please like comment and subscribe and i will see you next time